Good morning, dear friends. We are beginning this Mass of the Blessed Trinity, our opening hymn for today will be, Holy God, we praise your name. Holy God, we praise your name. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. My dear friends, we gather on this most solemn day to celebrate the solemnity of the most blessed Trinity, God revealing himself as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. In this Mass, we will be praying for you praying for your families and praying for the concerns you carry in your heart today we continue to pray for peace in our own country here peace in the hearts of people peace in our streets peace in our homes peace between racial divisions and tensions peace in God's people <coughs> We also pray in this Mass for all those who are sick with this coronavirus. Pray and ask for healing and for recovery. For those who have died, we ask for God's blessing of rest and peace. And for families grieving from these losses, we ask for God's comfort. As we begin to prepare to open our churches and open our societies and our communities, we pray that God may help us take necessary measures to protect each other and to keep ourselves safe. I also pray this Mass for Edward Fallon, a Vietnam vet who died many years ago. Today is his birthday and a friend of his is asking for us to remember him. We pray and ask that God may grant him rest and that God may give comfort to his family. Also pray for another woman who is battling breast cancer. Pray that God may grant her healing, that God may help her recover as she fears um, leaving her children orphans, having lost her husband already. Pray that God may be with them. Pray also for those who have birthdays and wedding anniversaries. At this time, that God may granted many more years to celebrate and I'll pray for anyone else whose concerns have been brought to us we pray for those who are looking for um, employment those who are asking for 
success in their marriages and in their families. Pray and ask that God may be with you and that God may bless you. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners to repent and Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayers. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High Jesus Christ with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery. Grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity powerful in majesty through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the book of Exodus. Early in the morning, Moses went up to Mount Sinai as the Lord had commanded him, taking along two stone tablets. Having come down in a cloud, the Lord stood with Moses there and proclaimed his name, Lord. Thus the Lord passed before him and cried out, The Lord, the Lord, a merciful and gracious God, slow to anger and rich in kindness and fidelity. Moses at once bowed down to the ground in worship. Then he said, If I find favor with you, O Lord, do come along in our company. This is indeed a stiff-necked people. Yet pardon our weak wickedness and sins and receive us as your own people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is glory and praise forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you, O Lord, the God of our fathers, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. And blessed is your holy and glorious name, praiseworthy and exalted above all ages. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you in the temple of your glory, praiseworthy and, and, praiseworthy and glory above all forever. Blessed are you on the throne of your kingdom, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Blessed are you who look in the depths from your throne upon the cherubims, praiseworthy and exalted above all forever. Glory and praise forever. Our second reading is a reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the church in Corinth. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Mend your ways. Encourage one another. Agree with one another. Live in peace. 
and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the holy ones greet you. The grace of our God Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Glory to God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come. Hallelujah. 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 My sisters and brothers, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that everyone who believes in him might not perish but might have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world but that the world might be saved through him. Whoever believes in him will not be condemned, but whoever does not believe has already been condemned because he has refused to believe in the name of the only Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, today we celebrate the blessed trinity in the course of history god chose to reveal himself as father and as son and as holy spirit three persons united undivided equal and yet one God, it is the most super outstanding and complicated mystery ever revealed. But that's why God is God. We could never phantom the essence of God. We know of his existence, but it's impossible for us to tell of the essence, which is the nature of God. That he revealed himself so he gives us himself as much as he thinks we need to know and so that's something i want us to reflect because scripture says god created us in his own image and what is god revealing his own image to us like and what is scripture calling us to based on that revelation today i will reflect on something I had read three hours of God's interaction with humanity three hours first the first hour is revelation God chooses to reveal himself to us to get into a relationship with us so God reveals himself now generally for me to know you or for you to know me i must reveal myself otherwise you would have what you would have an opinion of me that is based on your perception or your assessment of just looking at me unless i tell you something about me you have no idea whatever else you hear might be conjectures here and there about who i am 
But for you to truly know me, I must tell you about myself. So God chose, chooses the first arrow to reveal himself. Now, we don't have to reveal ourselves to God because he knows us better than we know ourselves. But for God, he has to show us and reveal himself to us. And so the first arrow is revelation. And in the course of history, at creation, yes, we have, um, we have insights into the Trinity because God the Father created using the power of his word and we have the Holy Spirit that sanctified creation and gave life. However, that revelation was not full. Over time, God sends us his son, Jesus Christ, who reveals himself as a son of God. And he said, the father in everything, he said, the father has sent me. I am in the father as the father is in me. Whoever has seen me has seen the father. The father and I are one. And before he leaves, he promises us he was going to send us another person, a comforter, was going to be a friend, the paraclete, the Holy Spirit of God. He calls him the one who would witness to me. And the reason he said that was because whatever he says to you will be taken from what is mine. So, so Jesus here reveals us, revealed us fully the third person of the Blessed Trinity. And on Pentecost, there was that fulfillment, the complete revelation of God as Father, of God as Son, and of God as Spirit. That's a community of persons. The second arrow is relationship. So when God reveals, when I reveal, when I reveal myself to you, there's a reason I do that. I want you to know me. I want us to have a relationship. Otherwise, I won't care revealing myself to you, telling you of my secrets and telling you generally that the relationship is built on trust, that I trust that you can handle what I'm going to offer to you and that I have something that I can, I can achieve with you, that we can work with. And so when God created the world, he decided to enter into a special relationship with man, with you and with me. Because he trusted us to be able to manage his business, which is the world. He created this world and trusted you and trusted me as good enough CEOs, good enough shepherds, good enough custodians, good enough teachers, good enough farmers, whatever it is that you are, good enough to do our work. I don't know if he can vouch or if that bed paid off. I don't know. I doubt. But he trusted you. He trusted you and entered into that relationship with you. Revealed everything to you and told you, I trust you to handle and to manage all of this and to deal with this world and to glorify me in this world. Now, that trust and that duty God placed on us constitutes the third arrow, which is responsibility. So God places out of trust that you and I can handle his world and that we could be good managers, good shepherds, good stewards, good everything to handle his world according to his original intent on creating the world. Now, that bed did not last for too long before man broke the trust in Adam and Eve. And we have been struggling since then to recapture the trust that God had in us. The Lord Jesus came to reveal to us that unlike or the initial revelation where God was just creator and the, the relationship God had with us was of creator and creatures. The Lord revealed to us that that relationship is deeper than just the creator and his creatures. 
that God sees us and treats us as children, giving us the right and authority to call him Abba, Father, Daddy. That was new, and that was the highest point of God's revelation in his son. Because in this son, we became sons and daughters by adoption, meaning we have the right to our father's inheritance. And if you read the gospel of today, you see how the, that text opens up, for God so loved the world, for God so loved the world, for God so loved you, for God so loved me. That's why I remind people every day that you are the delight of the Almighty God. For your sake, God was willing to send his son into the world for you or for me. So the mission of Christ was a mission of love, a mission to restore the trust that was lost, to restore a relationship that was broken. And that's why Christ came with assurance that he did not come to destroy us in case we thought he was going to be God's sentence for our broken promises, for the broken trust of our relationship, for betraying our trust or our God's trust on us. He wasn't coming as a sentence, God's sentence on you or on me for that failure. He did not come for that. He made that point very, very clear. He came to restore that relationship between us and God. And he remains the eternal mediator between God and man. Now, fast forward. First arrow, God reveals himself to us. Second arrow, God wants to, the reason, the reason he reveals himself is to get into a relationship with us. Third arrow, that relationship puts responsibilities on us because God says, in this relationship, I trust you to handle what I have created. I trust you to handle this spectacular edifice called the world. Trust to handle it as human beings. You will be the crown of my creation. You will be the masters. You go back and read that, that, comment, that, that commission. It says, you'll be masters of the earth. Dominate this world and manage it. You'll be the stewards of this world. And so that was the responsibility God put to us. And I think in that entire revelation, you will see, especially from the, from the second reading, you will see what the Apostle Paul is capturing in all of this. Because I think he has these three arrows in mind. He understands that God revealed, revealed himself to us, got into a relationship with us, and then entrusted responsibilities to us. And Paul recognizes that we, have, we may have failed in those responsibilities. So the church brought this second reading here at the middle for a reason. Brothers and sisters, rejoice. Why must we rejoice when we have just disappointed God? Who does that? You should be in fear for punishment. But Jesus revealed to us that God does not come towards us with punishment. He comes towards us to bandage our wounds, to heal our sins, and to restore our dignity and integrity as children of the Almighty God. That's why he comes. And so that is good news. That's, that's why the gospel is good news. So who, one who receives good news rejoices, doesn't cry, doesn't live in fear. He or she rejoices. So he says rejoice. But then he tells us, yeah, while you rejoice, realize you still have a responsibility. The third arrow, you still have a responsibility. And so this is what he says we should do to make sure we fix what went wrong in the second arrow, our relationship with God. 
that has to be fixed. And so he says, mend your ways. Now when someone says to you, just I, I like to focus on the verbs that are used here. Mend, that means repair. Mend your ways, repair your ways. That means the presumption is something has gone wrong in our, our relationship with God. Something has gone wrong. So I, I'm going to push this to you as I push it on myself too. Identify what has gone wrong, what has gone wrong in your relationship with God and with each other. The apostle says, for us to truly live in God and for us to continue to win God's, God's um, confidence, we must amend what is broken. We must amend what is damaged. We must amend what we have lost. So he says, mend your ways. And we must be honest with ourselves. We can deceive everyone else, but we can't deceive ourselves. We may choose to be unaware. We may choose to just ignore what our consciences speak every day on areas that need to be amended. The apostle says, mend your ways. And he goes on to tell us a few other things that we can do in trying to mend our ways. Encourage one another. Now tell me, don't we need encouragers at this time, more than ever? Whether people who are looking down, you know, this world and seeing how um, uncertain the future looks like. Not sure if they can go to school. Not sure how school is going to be like. Not sure if their businesses are going to be there tomorrow. Not sure if they can survive this virus if they get sick. Not sure if a loved one who is dying right, who is sick right now might survive. There is a lot of anxiety and fear right now. There are people who are living in fear that these racial tensions may just go worse and may just hold our society forever in, hosti in, a, in, a, in a hostage situation. We don't know what the future holds. But we do need encouragers. We do need encourage to encourage each other. And to encourage me, you, you might need to know where I'm hurting to encourage me. So that means we might need to create the safe environment where people can open themselves up without being afraid of being of, of, of without being afraid that they will be judged or condemned. So the apostle tells us, encourage one another. The question I ask you, would you consider yourself an encourager or a discourager? Do your actions encourage or discourage people? Are people encouraged in your presence or by your presence? Or do they just sneak away and just avoid? That's a question that you can answer. And the apostle goes on, he says, agree with one another. Now, if you check, these are all the qualities you find in the Blessed Trinity. These are all the qualities of the, the kind of relationship that you find between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So the, the apostle is projecting because you and I are created in God's image. So we, we can, we mimic, we have the possibility to model these same qualities in that relationship. So he says, agree with one another. The question I ask you, that's another verb. Agree. Agreeing means having a, coming together, unity. In, in the opening prayer, we talked about the unity of persons. To agree means to have our hearts reconcile differences. Now, differences will be there, but to have our in spite of those differences, that we come together. Agree. Now, tell me, if there is a time where we need more agreement than now, with all the tensions that we see, I think being able to agree, agree to build a world together, being able to agree in spite of our differences on things that we can work on, it's so very central and so very key right now. And so I ask you, what are you doing about that? How are you working? to be in greater agreement with neighbors and with people who may be different from you, whether they worship differently, look differently, act differently, 
you know, just do different things. And the apostle goes on, he says, then live in peace. Live in peace. Now, live in peace. Living. All right. This is an active verb. These are all active verbs. That means you must be doing something really, really. Not something that just happens. We do. So, live in peace. Now, ask yourself, do you have peace in your own soul? Because you cannot give what you don't have. Do you have peace in your own soul? In your own life? In your own heart? Are you able to give peace to someone else? Are you making efforts to make peace with others? There is something that I have listened to across this period. And we all do want peace. I do want peace in my life. I, 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 I pray for it every day. And I want a world where there is peace. But the fact is this. There can be no peace in this world until we learn to treat each other as we deserve. Me treat you as you deserve. You treat me as I deserve. There can be no true peace without justice in this world. It's impossible. What we might have is what St. Thomas Aquinas calls negative peace, where there is no outbreak of violence, but yet there is no real substantial interaction with persons. That's negative peace. Real peace requires that you treat me as I deserve, and I treat you as you deserve. And we build a wall where everyone is given their due. Otherwise, what we have is silence, not peace. Silence is the fact that I just choose to say nothing, to do nothing, because I fear that that might make the world unlivable for all of us. And so I will choose to be the one suffering whatever comes against me or towards me. That's not peace. But that's what some of us we wish we had. Cannot sustain, cannot endure, will not last long and will collapse because there is always a limit to how much a person can tolerate in life. But to, real, to build real peace, we have to work for it. That means I must be willing to give away something that is considered injustice for someone else. I must be willing to move towards, not away from. So the apostle invites us to leave another trait of the, of the Trinity, being in peace, because the Trinity is peace. In the Irishian ship, peace is what you get out of all of that. And then he goes on and says, then there's a blessing when we are able to mend our ways, encourage one another, agree with one another, live in peace. He says, and then the God of love and peace will be with you. Wow. The God of love and peace then will be with you. And we feel not as just as an individual. This also applies to greater organizations, the church, our country, world. If, if, if as a world, as a people, we strive to do all of this, that's a blessing we also get. The God of peace becomes our guest. The God of love and peace becomes your guest, my guest. And so we pray, dear friends, that we may remember the relationship with God defined in these three arrows, that God chose to reveal himself to you just so he can get into a relationship with you and then trusted you and trusted me to be able to manage his business, his creation. He gave us a responsibility. I'm sure we have not been doing so well and today we call upon to mend the areas we have not done well. By being encouragers, by being people who seek peace and seek agreement, and by being people who live and create an environment for peace. May God who has called us and granted us and given us this opportunity to be called his children also inspire us every day to walk and model what the Trinity reveals. Unity, peace, harmony, and every beauty that the world desires right now. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that God loves you very much. Let us pray. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, 
true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Now let us pray. Most merciful God, we lift our hearts and our minds in prayer for our Holy Father, the Pope. We pray for our bishops, pray for our priests, pray for our deacons, pray for religious men and women, those dedicated to your gospel. Pray too for leaders of other denominations and religions that we may recognize that the healing of the human soul is a duty placed on every one of us. And help us to continue to model what you have revealed in the Trinity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. We pray for our country at this time of great strife and peril. We pray, Almighty God, that as we continue to, to battle this coronavirus and the racial tensions, that you may help us to recognize the lessons that this moment teach us how much we depend on you and how much we depend on each other and help us to bridge these differences to build a healthier more just more faithful more hospitable and a fairer world we pray to the Lord Lord hear our prayers we pray for doctors for nurses pray for all those who are dedicated our police department our fire departments, emergency responders, all those dedicated to keeping our society safe, helping us heal, that God may bless them, that God may watch over and protect them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Pray for all those who have asked our prayers for Edward Fallon. Pray for those battling cancers. Pray for those who are pregnant and are waiting to deliver their children. Pray for young children who are sick, especially parents battling with sick children, that God may watch over and that God may grant graces in accordance with your needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayers. Most merciful God, hear these concerns we have brought before you as we turn them into the hands of our blessed mother, calling her prayers with the hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To you do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To you do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in the veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, your eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O Clemens, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made to become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of the vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Sanctify by the invocation of your name, O God, we pray, 
this oblation of our service and by it make of us an eternal offering to you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord, not in the unity of a single person, but in the Trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit. So that in the confessing of the one true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity in substance and their equality in majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubims too, and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day as with one voice they are claimed holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy O lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore this gift we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall that they may become for us the body and blood of your son our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, giving thanks he broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have heard us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring all to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Timothy Broglio, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember your, uh, your servant, Edward Paulon, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may marry to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. With confidence, let us now pray using the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we are with the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant all peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always, and with your spirit. Dear friends, let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to you and to your families, may God's peace rest and abide forever. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be free. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to life everlasting. Amen. Now that we are still unable to receive the Eucharist of Jesus Christ, let us call his blessings that we may participate spiritually. Most merciful, most loving, ever present God. As the church still battles in this moment of great distress, your children all around the world seek to receive you. We beg you, in your merciful love, that you may reach out to every one of them and commune with them spiritually. And bless them with your body and with your blood. And grant them grace for every good deed. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us help of body and soul. And as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity, grant us participation in your blessedness. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Before let us say the prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and sinners of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the other evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to take a moment to express my thanks to all of you for joining us as we continue to pray for each other, to encourage each other, as the apostles said, to agree with each other, and to live in peace with each other. Just so the God of love and peace will be with us. Enjoy the rest of your day. If you forget everything I said today, Remember, you are still the delight of the mighty God, and that God loves you very much. I didn't say that. I'm just telling you what God said. 
the Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our blessed mother, may God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing, now thank we all our God. Now thank we all our God. With hearts and hands and voices. Who wondrous things are done. In whom his world rejoices. Who for my mother's arms. Had blessed us on our way with countless deeds of love, and still is ours today. O oh, may this bounteous God through all our lives be near us with ever joyful hearts. And blessed is to cheer us and keep us in his ways and bless us when perplexed and free us from all ills in this world and the next.